welcome to the University of Kentucky live stream. My name is Kara Frankie, and I'm a representative of the University of Kentucky Admissions Office. We have a great group of people here today to give you information about all of the things you need to know about UK and to answer your questions throughout the event. I'm going to let everybody introduce themselves, and we're going to start here with Whitney. Hi, I'm Whitney Barber. I'm the current University of Kentucky student. And I'm Jesse Edge. I'm the Assistant Dean for International and Undergraduate Affairs in the College of Arts and Sciences. I'm Bethany Gist, the Student Financial Aid and Scholarship. My name is Dr. Trisha Tubbett Montgomery, and I'm the Director of Resident Affairs. All right, thank you guys. Uh, throughout the event tonight, we're going to go through and give you different pieces of information about the whole University of Kentucky experience. Uh, throughout the evening, please feel free to be typing in questions, and we'll get back to you with responses for some of those. Uh, we'll either type in a response to you or we'll address it here uh, on the live stream so we can hear a verbal response. If you do have questions after today or you want to follow up with us about some additional things, you can always reach the University of Kentucky using the email address admissions at uky.edu. If you prefer to call, you can reach us at 859-257-2000. So feel free to use either of those to contact us after today. I'm going to start off telling you a little bit of information about the admissions process um, because it's really important that you get started on this within um, the next few days. Uh, our early action deadline for admissions, scholarships, and the Lewis Honors College is December 1st. Uh, so that means 11.59 p.m. on Saturday, December 1st, you need to have applied to UK and sent in all of your additional materials. Uh, first off, how do you apply? So we have an online application available to you at applyuk.com. We also are a member institution for the Common application and the Coalition application. So you can choose any of those three application types to submit for UK. Uh, if you've looked at us in the past on the coalition application, we may not have been live yet, but we are accepting those applications now, so that's an option for you. When you fill out your application, you'll pay a $50 application fee. And then in addition to those things, you need to send us your high school transcript and official ACT or SAT test scores, meaning that they came from the testing center. So those are all of the things that you need to submit for us. We know that if you send your high school transcript tomorrow, uh, we might not have it by December 1st, but we'll have information saying that we sent it before December 1st. So it's okay if you send it in this week. Uh, if you have any questions about getting those uh, things sent in, please let us know because we can help. Once you send in your admissions application, you wanna make sure to send us a FAFSA as well. And the reason that we encourage an early FAFSA is that if you apply to UK by December 1st and you submit a FAFSA, the free application for federal student aid by December 1st, you'll get an early estimate of your financial aid around January 1st if you're admitted to UK. So that's a great advantage. Uh, if you are interested in competitive scholarships, academic scholarships, or the Lewis Honors College, it's really important that you get all of your materials in by December 1st. You can apply for admission after that. We'd be happy to look at an application from you, but if you're interested in those scholarships in the Honors College, we do need you to apply early action by December 1st. So those are important dates and deadlines to remember. Uh, we can definitely go through some questions about that, but I'm going to pass things over for now to Beth to give an overview of the financial aid and scholarship process for UK. Hi. Uh, the important thing to remember in all of this is, just like Kara said, December 1st is a big day. Um, students who have completed a FAFSA, and the application has been live since uh, October 1st at FAFSA, F-A-F-S-A dot gov. Um, so students who have completed this by December 1st and have, uh, are admitted, we are sending the early estimate for financial aid uh, to students right around January 1st. So it will be a nice Christmas present coming through. Um, the other thing to keep in mind has to do with academic scholarships. As she mentioned, we want to make sure that all transcripts and ACT scores are submitted by December 1st. We receive a lot of questions from students wanting to know if they can take a later ACT date 
And unfortunately this year, we're not gonna be able to do that. Um, for admissions purposes, absolutely, that ACT score is gonna be valuable and important. Uh, but for the purposes of academic scholarships, make sure to send in your scores uh, by that December 1st deadline. Uh, the FAFSA itself does not have a December 1st deadline per se. That's just letting you know that if you submit it by that date, we'll be able to uh, send out that early estimate. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit longer of a wait if you file after December 1st. Um, and she mentioned automatic scholarship award notifications. Those are coming through on a rolling basis as students are admitted. Uh, they should start arriving to you in December, so right around the corner. Um, and then competitive scholarships, we're gonna be notifying students who have applied for competitive scholarships by March 1st. All right, well, thank you for that information. Um, now we're going to switch over to Trisha here at the end, and she's gonna to talk to you a little bit about residence life here at the University of Kentucky. Yeah, so it's a really great time to attend the University of Kentucky. Not only is our city growing, the city of Lexington is growing, but our institution um, has matched that and has grown as well. So we have a lot of really great options and um, opportunities for students to take advantage of and live inside of one of our residence halls. Um, we also have state-of-the-art dining facilities on campus, so you can go to any part of our campus and actually find some really great food options. Um, and then in addition to that, we have about 14 live and learning programs in our residence halls that students can take advantage of. Now the other really great part of being able to attend the University of Kentucky is that UK has made it extremely easy for students to take advantage of all these great opportunities. So all you have to do is fill out one application. This one application will allow you to actually complete whatever options you would like to take advantage of related to your dining, LLPs, and the residence halls. So you get to do that on one stop shop on your housing application. So that's a really great part of being able to apply. So when you get onto the housing application, there are gonna be a number of options that you have to, that you get to choose from. Particularly with your meal plans, you can actually pick a flex plan, and that's more like a debit card um, and allows you to sort of swipe, add money to it, and swipe at any of the dining facilities on our campus. You also have an opportunity to take advantage of what we call our meal swipes, and that's where you sort of get packaged meal swipes um, for some of our dining facilities on campus as well. Now when it comes to the residence halls, there's actually three room types that a lot of our students are usually interested in. So we have um, your four person suites, we have your two person suites, and then we also have your four, um, your four suite style rooms. So those are different type of room types that you can actually find on different parts of our campus as well in any of our residence halls. And then as I've mentioned, you also have the opportunity to apply for a live and learning program. There's 14 options. I strongly encourage you to check out our housing application and our website to learn more about all 14. But the great thing is that you get to apply to at least three of the living learning programs on the housing application as well. So we strongly encourage if you're going to be an early action decision student to make sure that you apply by February 15th. The opportunity or ability to apply by February 15th will give you an answer much quicker related to whether or not you got into an LOP and also getting the room type that you would like to receive. So overall, really great time to apply. Strongly encourage students to check out our website and learn more about housing, housing and dining options. Thanks. Uh, we are having some questions come in, so we're going to take care of a few of those. Uh, we did have someone ask about taking college classes in high school, and if that means you should apply as a freshman or a transfer student. If you're taking AP classes, IB classes, dual credit, anything like that, you're going to still apply as a freshman with college credit earned prior to high school graduation. It's going to ask you to enter in the colleges where you've taken those classes, um, but it's important that you go ahead and pick that freshman option. Uh, one of our other questions was about if you have to submit a letter of recommendation by December 1st. For the admissions process, we do not require a letter of recommendation. You're welcome to submit one. Uh, December 1st is a great time to have that in, but we will accept those throughout the year. 
another question that we got was about the Air Force ROTC program. So I'm going to let Jesse answer that question. Sure. Thanks, Kara. Um, Actually, uh, before I started in my current position, I worked with the Air Force ROTC program here as the director of operations, so I feel like, uh, like I can answer that. Um, that program is a very active program. Uh, it's led by Lieutenant Colonel Katie Buss, and, and she takes her team uh, to many places. For example, they just did a, a POW MIA run uh, where they ran from Lexington to Frankfurt as a uh, formation. Uh, they do a lot of activities on sporting events. Uh, the um, Arnold Air Society. Uh, there, there are just many, many events that the cadets do together. Uh, so if you're interested in the Air Force ROTC program, I strongly encourage you to contact them. Uh, their website's afrotc.as.uky.edu. Thank you. Uh, another question that we got was asking if it's if you don't like your major, if it's easy to switch to a different one, um, I definitely came from the, the not really sure side of things. So I can tell you from firsthand experience at UK that it's really easy to explore different types of classes, um, take a little bit from different programs and figure out what you want to study. If you end up not liking your major, for the most part, it's super easy to uh, switch from one thing to another. So uh, you don't need to worry about getting stuck in a major that you don't like here at UK. Uh, one of the other questions that we got was asking about uh, student life here at UK and what the lifestyle is like here at Kentucky. Uh, so I'm going to let our student panelist introduce herself a little bit uh, because she can answer some of those questions and kind of talk from that perspective. So um, Whitney, can you start out and tell us uh, what year you are, what you're studying, and where you're from? Yeah, so I, like she said, I'm Whitney. I'm a senior, so I'll be graduating in May. Super excited. I'm from a really small town called Dorton. If you haven't heard of it, it's at the tip of eastern Kentucky. You really can't go any further east. And I'm a biology and neuroscience dual degree student. Very good. Um, why did you choose UK? Why I chose UK kind of fit in the Goldilocks zone, if that makes sense. So um, far enough away that I felt I was getting the full experience of what it was like to be an adult, to be in independent, but close enough I was still able to see my family as much as I wanted. Um, the research opportunities here were amazing. I'm really interested, as you can tell, in the STEM field. So research, uh, being able to do that here was perfect. There's a medical school here, I'm pre-med. So it just kind of fit all of the boxes of things I was really interested in and things that I wanted to pursue. And I knew I could do it all on one campus without having to search or travel. It was all already here. Great. And can you tell us a little bit about what it's like to be a pre-med student? Do you think UK is a good option for someone who's pre-med? Uh, like I said, there's a medical school here, so it's kind of already built in. Um, it's a great option of being able to see what it's like to be a med student, uh, what it's like to be on a huge campus. It's all kind of built in already as far as being pre-med goes. I'm not going to lie, it's hard. Everyone knows it, but it's the same at every university. Um, med medical school applications are competitive but UK gives you all of the classes you need and more. I've taken everything from pharmacology classes to anatomy to physiology and back, which are all subjects I'm going to be learning in med school later on. I'm being able, I have had the opportunity to do a ton of things that are gonna prepare me for med school, so research, studying abroad, all of it. And like I said, it's all housed in UK, so I think it, it's just a nice little bow that way you don't have to um, try and search and be like, what what's right for me as a pre-med student? It's all already here. What do you think is one thing all students at UK should do before they graduate? Uh, for fun, I, what is the best thing? So UK Student Activities Board is amazing and they always put on the Distinguished um, Speaker Series and we just had Bill Nye and all of you should know that Bill Nye is amazing and a national treasure and I love him. <laughs> uh, so I was able to go to the Dis Distinguished um, Lecture Series and that's always something people should do. We've had everyone from TV to the news and back and being able to hear about someone else's experience and also kind of see your idol in person, that's the best thing. Even if you know it wasn't Bill Nye, which was really awesome, there's always something to do. Okay. One of the questions that we got on chat was asking if all of the classes at UK have 200 students. What would you say to that? Uh, no, it's honestly major dependent, so it kind of depends. Obviously, if you're um, 
going into a major with a lot of students, your intro classes are going to have a lot of people. There are a lot of people taking those courses, but typically those courses have recitations, which are like smaller lectures, typically of 30 or so students, most of the time even less, uh, that you meet in addition to your huge lecture class. I prefer huge lectures. Um, I'm typically a person who is very quiet in class, so when I get home I have a lot of questions, but in a huge lecture someone else has already probably asked those questions. Um, it's Like I said, it's kind of major dependent, um, so some of your classes can have as little as 10 people, and like I said, it really just depends. Most of my classes have much less than 200 people, and I, even as I'm a biology major and it's the largest major on campus, I've, I know the same 50 people were in the same class the whole time I've been here. It's much smaller than it seems. Great. And can you tell us about your experience living on campus? Were you part of a living learning program? Did you enjoy your experience? Yeah, so I lived on campus my first year. Um, so my freshman year, I was in a living learning program. Um, what is now Blazer Hall, which was something different. So it's showing my age. But it was, I loved living on campus, honestly. Um, sometimes I wish I still did. The convenience is something you can't get anywhere else. The food you don't have to cook yourself so it's amazing it's super convenient um, and I met my best friends people I still talk to um, both of my roommates I met because we all lived in the same dorm so my little family that I've created here uh, part is because of the LLP I was in because we were all a part of the same LLP and part is because we were just in the same dorm and the dorms they do little activities together uh, so you're getting to meet everyone you know you're really kind of getting the sense of community and you know I am from this state so I felt ready to be here, but I, I feel like I learned so much more about UK and Lexington in general and where I was from just being in a dorm because I was meeting all these really cool people. So I loved it. I recommend it. I would still do it now and kind of wish I had. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, if you have questions uh, that you want to hear from a student, obviously Whitney's with us, so feel free to be submitting those. Uh, some of the other questions that I've seen, there have been a couple people asking about application fee waivers. If you qualify for an ACT or SAT fee waiver, or if you're on free or reduced lunch at school, or you have a financial need where you're not able to pay an application fee, we'll gladly take care of that application fee for you. All you need to do is talk to your counselor at school, have them email admissions at uky.edu with your name, your birth date, and information that you qualify for a financial fee waiver for UK, and we'll take care of that for you. So any free or reduced lunch students, anyone who qualifies for an ACT, SAT waiver, um, or just anyone who, you know, can't uh, pay that $50 um, and needs help getting to UK. Uh, and I will let Jesse go ahead and kind of introduce himself and tell you a little bit about the College of Arts and Sciences. Thanks, Kara. So, um, like I said earlier, my name is Jesse Hedge. I'm the Assistant Dean for International and Undergraduate Affairs in the College of Arts and Sciences. Uh, the Art College of Arts and Sciences is the, is the uh, oldest and largest college in the university. Uh, we have 19 academic departments and we offer degrees in 27 different disciplines. Um, on top of that, we also have two options for exploratory or undeclared students. And then we also have 36 minors. So as you can see, that the uh, uh, College of Arts and Sciences covers a wide range. Um, we have humanities, we have social sciences, and we have math and natural sciences as well. Um, and then some of the other majors that we have that, that uh, we're finding a lot of students are interested in now are interdisciplinary majors. So it's uh, an opportunity for students that, that maybe um, have interest in multiple, multiple areas um, and can't really select just one. So you can do an interdisciplinary major, for example, international studies or foreign language international economics. Uh, majors like that, um, or even neuroscience is an interdisciplinary major. Uh, so those are all housed in our college. Um, and then uh, recently we uh, opened up the Jacob Science Building. I guess that's been two years now. And uh, the Jacob Science Building is, uh, is a sight to be seen if you're a science major or even uh, just any student here will take courses there. And uh, it's certainly an outstanding place to learn and earn your degree. Very good. 
Uh, some of the other questions that we've received, one of them asked about when you will receive your financial aid package. Uh, I believe the person said that they had already been admitted to UK. Uh, so if you've already been admitted to UK, um, if you sent us a FAFSA and applied before November 15th, you'll get your early estimate for financial aid about mid-December. Uh, if you did not apply before November 15th, but you do before December 1st for both of those things, you'll hear about January. First. So it's usually about a four week turnaround once we have your completed admissions application and a FAFSA on file for you. Uh, there were also some questions about when you'll hear back about scholarships and the Lewis Honors College. Uh, Lewis Honors College selections will be announced around mid-February, so if you've already applied and been admitted and haven't heard anything, that's not unusual. Nobody will get a decision until about mid-February for the Honors College. Our competitive scholarship decisions will be announced by March 1st. So we are sending out uh, scholarship offers for our academic scholarships. Those are on a rolling basis, so it depends on when you apply to UK, but competitive scholarships won't be announced until the spring. I did see another student ask if you have to put down a deposit for housing before you get your financial aid package. Do you wanna take that one? Yeah, I don't mind at all. So um, when you apply, you do have to apply and um, complete a housing application for you, but you do not have to put down your deposit immediately um, once you've applied. So we do ask for you to do that eventually throughout the process, but not immediately when you apply. Great. And if you are one of those students who has a fee waiver uh, for the admissions application fee, you don't have to pay that housing application fee, so that will also be free. You'll just um, pay your deposit sometime in the spring. Uh, I am seeing some questions about engineering, uh, so I do want to let you all know if you aren't aware that our College of Engineering here at UK is doing their own live stream event tonight at 9 p.m. So if you're interested in some extra details for that college, uh, we can send you some information through chat and then you're also welcome to join us at 9 p.m. for information about those programs and the opportunity to ask questions directly from those representatives. Um, I see a question, how do I know if UK has received my ACT score? Uh, we do have a status checker online if you're applying through our website, but you can always email the admissions office or give us a call if you want to verify that we have your ACT, your transcript, uh, anything for your application. We're always happy to check on that for you. Uh, let's see. Uh, what is the deadline on need-based versus merit-based scholarships? So all of those merit-based scholarships, the academic and competitive, is December 1st. Do you want to talk about deadlines for need-based? Sure thing. So need-based scholarships, those are taken into account when you file your FAFSA. We are going to award those on a first-come, first-served basis. So the earlier we receive your FAFSA, the quicker you are in line for those need-based awards. Great. And can you be 10 points shy on your SAT score to apply for certain academic scholarships? We have pretty hard deadlines on our academic scholarships for this year. There's a lot of people applying right now. Um, and for that reason, we have to be pretty strict on those, dead, on those uh, regulations. Okay. Uh, I see a question, if I want to do nursing, can I send you ACT scores in February? Uh, if you need to send us additional ACT scores to meet the requirements for pre-nursing at UK, you can definitely send those in February. I recommend that you go ahead and complete your entire admissions application now, have everything in by December 1st, and then we'll match up those additional scores with your file when they come in in February. So go ahead and take care of the rest of it now. Let's see. Uh, I am already accepted into Kentucky and I'm looking to go into the pharmacy career. Is the College of Public Health the right college to go to? Um, so we get a lot of questions from students who are on pre-professional tracks, so they're interested in medicine, pharmacy, physical therapy, um, and 
for most of those programs, you'll complete your entire pre-professional track and you'll also complete a bachelor's degree. Pre-pharmacy is a little bit different. You don't have to earn a bachelor's degree to go into pharmacy school, so it's up to you if you want to complete a major or if you just want to do the pre-pharmacy classes. Uh, if you are wanting to do a bachelor's degree, public health would be a fine choice. You would have some other options as well. If you just want to do the pre-pharmacy classes, um, then I wouldn't recommend listing a bachelor's in public health. Um, but if you send us an email, we can kind of follow up with you and do some extra advising to get you in the right program. Let's see. Uh, question about when you'll hear back from the College of Architecture. Um, typically the early spring is when those decisions come out so if you've applied for architecture or interior design you should hear about those soon. Let's see. What qualities are you looking for in applicants? Uh, well, you might have noticed that we are um, asking a lot of things from you on the application. So um, we ask for information about what you've been involved with. We ask for an essay. Uh, we ask for your transcript. So we're looking at your grades and your classes. And we ask for test scores. So there are really lots of things that we're looking at to see if you're a great fit for Kentucky. So part of them are academic factors the classes that you've taken, uh, the level of the courses you've taken, your grades, your test scores, and then the non-academic factors are your student organizations, uh, your work or volunteer experience, leadership opportunities, um, the church you go to, sports, anything that kind of makes you you and that you're passionate about. So we look at lots of things on your application. Uh, do all of the dorms have in-suite bathrooms and showers? That's a really great question. Um, so I'm sort of dating myself at this time, but you know, back when I went to college, there were common showers that were on the floors and we all sort of had to travel in our bath shoes to get to that. That at the University of Kentucky is not the situation here. So almost all, of, not almost, all of our residence halls actually do have in-suite style bathrooms. So another really great reason why people should consider living on campus. Uh, I see that someone commented they already went to an open house with us, so I think it's a good time to mention that we have lots of opportunities for you to come and see our campus. If you haven't been to UK already, or even if you've been before, we have an amazing visitor center here at UK, and it's located in the brand new UK Gatton Student Center. Uh, it's our biggest and best new building. It just opened up in the summer, uh, and they house the visitor center. Uh, so uh, what they do is daily uh, twice every weekday visits they do an information session for you that tells you all of the basics about UK and then a current student is going to walk you around campus and show you all the places you're going to go every day so you're going to see inside one of those amazing suites that we have you're going to go to the library the gym uh, you're going to go to a classroom and see what that looks like so you might get to see the Jacobs academic science building um, uh, and you have the opportunity to talk to a student and ask questions and kind of get a feel for the amazing atmosphere of our campus. And don't forget the uh, specialized visits as well for those colleges. Right. Yeah, if you're interested in something a little bit more personalized to what your experience is going to be at UK, we have opportunities for you to do visits with academic colleges. Uh, you can sit in on classes. Uh, you can take tours of the academic area. Uh, lots of different things that you can do. Uh, there's a question if students have good relationships with the professor. So I'm going to let our student answer. <laughs> I have amazing relationships with my professors. I'll see some of them on campus and just stop and talk about their day, um, ask about family, pets, whatever. Um, so I'm really close with most of my professors. College is definitely what you make of it. So in high school, it's a little easier to have those relationships, but college, you're forming lasting relationships. So reach out to professors, go to office hours. We're here to help. I have loved my classes. I've loved my professors, and they're amazing. OK. I Let's see. Question, are professors always teaching classes or are there ever any TAs teaching a class? Yeah. Um, I can answer that. Um, 
So as far as that goes, for the most part, um, professors are teaching your classes. The exception comes with any labs you're taking as a natural science student, if you're taking any labs. Um, you do have TAs that are going over your lecture because there's so many students taking these, but there is a professor that um, kind of organizes and makes sure all the TAs are ready, and then in your recitations, typically it's a TA. But for the most part, any lecture, it's going to be a professor, and you're not going to have to worry about that. Great. I see a question saying I would love to visit UK, but I live in Texas. Is there a way I could see a tour on YouTube or a virtual tour? Uh, we do have a virtual tour option here at UK, so uh, you can take part in that and kind of get a sense for uh, our university. Um, our chat people will send you uh, some information about how you can access the virtual tour. Uh, we also have a University uh, of Kentucky videos all over YouTube, so you always have the opportunity to kind of um, see some of our students in action and hear from their perspective what their experience has been at Kentucky. So watching those videos can sometimes really help you to get to know a university. Let's see, I have already been accepted, but I have received emails that I would benefit from merit scholarships because of my ACT or SAT scores. How do I do that without applying all over again? Uh, so if you applied to UK and you have ACT or SAT scores and a GPA that qualify you for academic scholarships, as long as you applied to UK with all your materials by December 1st, we'll automatically consider you for those. Uh, if you are eligible for competitive academic scholarships, it was in the admissions application what the criteria is, so you should have had the opportunity to apply at that time for those scholarships. If you missed out on that, we can always have you do an application supplement that you'll need to send in by December 1st, and the admissions office can send that to you directly. Are there many internships or other major related opportunities for UK students? Uh, do you want to, you guys want to? Yeah. So uh, within the College of Arts and Sciences, and actually within uh, most of the colleges here at the university, there are plenty of opportunities for in internships. Um, and then on top of that, uh, there's uh, a ton of opportunities for research. Uh, the research on, within the university is, um, it's not, a lot of times people assume that that's just restricted to science majors, and, and that's just simply not true. Um, just about any major that you have, you'll have opportunities to do research, you'll have opportunities to intern with local businesses, you'll have opportunities uh, throughout campus. So uh, student involvement uh, is really as much as you want to do, you'll have an opportunity to be involved. Uh, question, when do you hear if you qualified for need-based scholarships and how much is an average need-based scholarship? Honestly, it varies. Um, of course, preference is given to early applicants, so the key is just submitting your FAFSA as early as possible. Um, we do get those awarded as quickly as we possibly can. Uh, sometimes uh, need-based scholarships will pop up at odd times during the semester just as funding becomes available and we'll award them then. Uh, so there's not necessarily a hard date on when we notify students about those, but again, uh, preference is given to early applicants. So just submit your FAFSA as quickly as possible and if you have any questions about it, contact our office and speak with one of your financial aid counselors. Uh, does UK super score the ACT? Uh, we do super score for the admissions process, but we don't super score for scholarships. So we take whatever is the highest single composite ACT or SAT score that we have. Uh, are recommendation letters necessary for those scholarships? No, they are not. Uh, is the Link Blue account the one that I received when I submitted my application? Yes, uh, your Link Blue will be a combination of letters and numbers. Uh, so my name is Kara Frankie. My Link Blue is C N F R A N two. So it will look something like that. Let's see. Um, I saw a question earlier about National Hispanic or. Um, National Merit Finalist Scholarships. Um, there's nothing extra that you need to do for those besides apply to UK. Um, so you'll automatically get an offer for that award if you qualify. 
Let's see, can you elaborate on the Patterson Scholarship for non-resident prospective students? Um, so the Patterson Scholarship is the one that's for National Merit uh, finalists or National Hispanic finalists. So, um, and that's for either resident or non-resident students. It's full tuition for four years, and then you have a $10,000 uh, housing stipend for the first two years uh, living on campus. Let's see, I'm a big basketball fan. Are there opportunities to become involved with the basketball team, such as a team manager or an assistant? Um, we do have an excellent basketball team here at UK. If you haven't heard, we're also a football school uh, and just about everything else this year. So we have excellent opportunities. Um, as you can probably imagine, it's a pretty popular thing that people want to be involved with our basketball teams here at UK. So we do have those positions, but they are very competitive to get. Uh, if you are someone who's kind of a super fan and you really want to be involved, we have a great student organization called Team Wildcat. Uh, so if you've ever been to a UK game in Rupp Arena and you've seen students running in front of the student center telling people what to do during free throws, those are members of Team Wildcat who are getting involved here on campus with the athletic experience. So there are lots of ways to be involved depending on what you want to do. I ordered additional ACT scores to be sent to UK. Will those be considered in the admissions process if they arrive after December 1st? Um, if you send us a message, we can always check to see if we've already received those. Uh, we do have a December 1st deadline for um, test scores to be received, um, but we can check to see if those have come in. Usually there's not a big lag time between us receiving those. Is there a form just for the merit-based scholarships so I don't have to apply again? Um, if you are eligible for competitive scholarships and you didn't apply when you applied to UK, we can send you a form for that. If you contact the admissions email, we can let you know whether you need to do that form or if you're already eligible for uh, some scholarships and you don't need to do that specific additional application. Let's see. When do I receive my merit scholarship information? Um, we've mentioned a little bit, but competitive scholarships will be out by March 1st. Uh, academic scholarships are based on when you apply. So they're being rolled out right now and you should hear soon if you're already admitted to UK. Are there many clubs for students to get involved with on campus? Yeah, so I'm in a couple of clubs myself. Um, everywhere from you know, being on the pre-med activities council, like you said, I'm pre-med. Um, there are major specific clubs or there are clubs just for things you're interested in. So anything from politics, there's a Bollywood dancing club, um, badminton, there's really not a limit to what you can do. We have over 500 organizations and we're constantly looking for new ones. So if, <clears throat> excuse me, for some reason you can't find a club that fits your particular interest, it's super easy to get one started. So. A lot of fun, a lot of things to do. Uh, if I just submitted uh, for my transcript and fee waiver and they're postmarked by December 1st, will my application still be considered early action? Yes, we do look at those postmarks. So if it comes in on December 5th, but it was postmarked by December 1st, you'll be just fine. Uh, are some majors limited to get into? I received my application letter and it gave me a major I did not request. Uh, some majors do have additional requirements. If you contact the admissions office, we can let you know uh, what requirement you may have missed and give you information uh, about what you need to be switched back into your first choice major. I got admitted to the psychology program at UK. Why should I choose Kentucky? All right, I can answer that one. Um, there's several reasons. One, um, because of our campus uh, and where we're located and the, uh, the opportunities that you have in Lexington. Um, our psychology department um, has uh, very, very talented faculty, um, award-winning faculty. There's opportunity to do research. Uh, there's, uh, the faculty just care about the students. Uh, they're focused on student success. Um, uh, psychology is one of our uh, top majors, so 
uh, certainly being accepted into that major, uh, Kentucky's a great choice for you. Is it okay to be undecided about which major to pursue? It definitely is, but we want you to pick our direction to get started with. So we have some excellent options for exploratory programs. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about what yeah. that looks like? Yeah, so uh, like Kara said, you you really want to at least have an idea of, of generally where you want to go. So um, most colleges have an undeclared or exploratory in that college. Um, and then our college, College of Arts and Sciences, we actually have two different choices for exploratory. So if you're leaning towards math and science, then we're, we have an exploratory math and natural science. But if you're leaning towards humanities and social sciences, then we have uh, exploratory humanities and social sciences. And what that does is that allows us to kind of get you on a path for something that you will be interested in. Now that doesn't stop you from changing later, but um, for example, if you're going on the math and natural science route, then we'll start start you with your math and start you with your chemistry. Um, then if you change, then you already have that set. I see a question about, is it difficult to find a job after graduation? I'm applying for engineering and, and I'm deciding between many types of schools and I wanna make sure finding a job is likely after graduation. Um, I wanna remind you, if you missed it earlier, we are having an engineering live stream at 9 p.m. So you can always log on and hear information um, about what their career services are like. But we do have career services offices through our academic colleges. Uh, so the College of Engineering will have staff members who are there to help get you uh, prepared for the college or for the job search after college graduation um, and make sure that you're investing uh, your time in college in a way that's going to set you up for success for your life. A lot of our engineering students will choose to take part in co-op experiences so you take a semester off of your classes or sometimes you co-op over the summer some people co-op for a year and you work for a company and you get great experience uh, you get something great for your resume and a lot of times you kind of figure out what types of industries you want to work in what you like and what you don't like so they're really an excellent way to set yourself up for um, becoming a more competitive applicant for jobs um, and they have excellent placement rates in the College of Engineering so they can talk about all of those things with you Let's see, we are gonna be wrapping things up. I wanna let you know if we didn't already address your question on the air, we'll be typing responses to questions. And again, if there's anything you didn't get the chance to ask or you want further clarification on, that email address is admissions at uky.edu. Uh, and then the phone number is 859-257-2000. If you do have questions for any of these folks, you can just send it to the same uh, place and we'll make sure to get you in touch with the right person to answer your question. Uh, before uh, we leave tonight, I want to make sure to remind you that December 1st is our early action deadline for admissions, scholarships, and the Lewis Honors College. So it's extremely important that you have your application and all of your supplemental materials sent by 11:59 on December 1st. So that's coming up on Saturday. Don't forget, get that taken care of. Uh, if you want to come and see us, we would love to host you here on campus, so please set up a visit uh, so you can see the amazing opportunities that we have here at UK and so you can experience Lexington, the city where we're located. Uh, if you are interested in engineering, also please tune in at 9 p.m. for that broadcast. Um, anything else we want to add? Come to UK. All right, go cats. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Have a good night.